today on Access TV. Live live with Gotham Comedy live. Get ready to laugh with Michael Che, Daniel Tirado, Ryan Reese, Mark Vieira, and your host, Ted Alexandro. From the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Alexandro. Thank you, thank you. Wow, listen to this crowd. Welcome to Gotham Comedy Live. Thank you for being here. Are you ready for an amazing show? <laughs> that is a yes. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate you being here. I am 44 years old. I'm single, never married, no kids. I did it. <laughs> Made it through the maze. <laughs> Let me tell you something, if you are in your 20s or 30s and single, just hold on. <laughs> because it is beautiful on the other side. <laughs> you just don't hear enough about it. You don't have enough role models. It's pretty much me and George Clooney, I think. <laughs> but it's a good life. You make money, you get to keep it. You make plans, you can just break them. <laughs> you can even overrule yourself. Like, ah, oh, I gotta go do that thing today. No, you don't. Oh yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> and I catch myself smiling. <laughs> just little moments throughout the day. Like every time I see a couple fighting in the street, <laughs> I just smile and wave. Every time I see a woman yelling or crying, either one, I just kind of giggle to myself. Every time I see a guy with that blank expression on his face, like, what the fuck did I do? I walk past like, probably nothing. I think it's too soon to get married in your 20s nowadays. <laughs> Agreement, <laughs> this side. I just think it's too soon. I feel like you don't have enough life experience yet. You don't have enough tools on your tool belt. All you have is like a hammer and you're fucking banging everything. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa, some of those are screws. <laughs> you're like, so it still works. I think I had a Blockbuster video membership in my 20s. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. Because Netflix didn't exist yet. So, don't get married in your 20s. <laughs> You're gonna marry Blockbuster, then Netflix will show up. You'll be like, holy shit, this is way better. <laughs> I should have waited. A lot of my friends are married. They have kids. They tell me things like, Ted, you know it's amazing. When you have kids, it changes everything. And I believe them because we're not friends anymore. <laughs> Hard to make plans with married people, you know? I'll ask my married friends to see a movie, you know, anything. I'll be like, dude, you wanna go see Iron Man, whatever, you know, five years ago? They'd be like, I can't, I'm saving it for Nicole. I'm like, I didn't ask to see your cock. <laughs> it's just a movie. <laughs> to me, being single is a struggle between loneliness and euphoria. You know what I mean? It's like loneliness right before you go to bed at night and euphoria the whole entire rest of the day. <laughs> really happy. I think marriage is basically just finding someone who you can tolerate. Just someone you can put up with. Which is why they use the word take in the marriage ceremony. It's like, can you take this one as your wife? <laughs> really, you can take this one? All right, you do what you wanna do. But I'm getting irritated just looking at you. Sometimes people ask me if I'm gay. 
which bothers me. Uh, I don't, you know, not because I think there's anything wrong with being gay, obviously, but why does it immediately have to be that? You know, Batman, Superman, they were single. <laughs> Did you ever think of that? I might be a superhero. <laughs> Maybe my love for this great metropolis supersedes whatever petty need I have for intimacy. <laughs> Take a moment. <laughs> Dumbledore is gay, did you guys hear that? <laughs> J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter series, sent out a press release saying that the character Dumbledore is gay. Some people were outraged, couldn't believe it. I can't believe he's gay. I'm like, really, can't believe he's gay? But you could believe he's a wizard? <laughs> Interesting. I'm pretty sure gay people actually exist. <laughs> gay people have their own flag, of course, the rainbow flag. Nobody ever burns that flag, though. That wouldn't be much of a protest to see a flaming gay flag. It's more of a show of support, really. <laughs> I think you just like who you like. I think you know it pretty early on. I remember being in kindergarten, first grade, seeing certain girls in my class and thinking, oh, I hope she's never absent. <laughs> that was it. I hope she's in the building. It was as far as it went. And maybe there was a little boy thinking the same thing about me. Can only hope I let him on just enough to break his gay little heart. <laughs> I don't like the term sexual preference. I don't think it's accurate language. I don't think it's a preference. Like, I prefer direct flights. <laughs> but if there's a layover, I'll still take the flight. If I book a flight to Vagina <laughs> and there's a layover in man's ass, <laughs> I'm canceling the trip. <laughs> I go to the gym, I like to watch uh, people at the gym. I like watching the old guys at the gym. You see the old guys? Just a little pack of them, they're just like smiling, like happy to be alive, right? <laughs> they never really use the machine for what it's supposed to be for. It could be like a bicep machine, the guy's got his head in there. <laughs> it's like, I guess he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Why is he wearing dress shoes? <laughs> I keep it simple though, you know, I'll do like cardiovascular exercise, maybe jump rope a little bit. Sometimes if they don't have the rope there, I just do the jumping motion. And there was this old guy on the Stairmaster. He's like, why don't you use a real rope? I was like, why don't you climb real stairs? Why doesn't she ride a real bike? This whole place is a sham. Why do you got to single me out? <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. We have got an amazing show for you here tonight. You're here on Amazing Night. We will be right back with Gotham Comedy Live on Access TV. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Ryan Reese is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Thank you, thank you everybody. Your first comic tonight, good friend of mine. He's been all over television. You've seen him on BH1, you've seen him on Fox. Please welcome to the stage, Ryan Reese. <laughs> Thank you. 
Haven't actually done anything yet. Thank you, thank you. Oh, nice looking audience we have here. A lot of women, a lot of guys. How old are you, buddy? 21 years old. I always ask the guy's age. I never ask a lady, that's rude. How much do you weigh, sweetheart? She's like 90 pounds, I just vomited. I try to stay in shape, I play sports, love sports. The only sport I don't like is uh, soccer. They don't call it that in Europe, what do they call it? That's right, in Europe they call soccer football. In America we call soccer fucking boring. <laughs> I got yelled at by a French guy. He goes, ah, you Americans don't like soccer because you've never won a World Cup. Well, that's true, America's never won a World Cup, but then again, we did win two World Wars, so what's up, bitches? <laughs> That joke's not usually a room divider. <laughs> Somebody rooting for the other side? <laughs> they will get you next time! <laughs> I like accents. There's only one accent I don't like. I'm not a huge fan of the Russian accent. It's a little heavy. If you go to a strip club in New York City, all the strippers are from Russia. Pretty girls, but the accent does not lend itself to the profession. <laughs> Hello, would you like me to give you a lot of that? <laughs> No, thank you, Boris. <laughs> okay, let me know when you're ready for boom, boom. <laughs> Russians are very tough people, tough people. Don't ever complain to a Russian person, no matter what they look like. I got a Russian friend, her name's Upa. Uh, she's a model. I don't complain to her, because no matter what I say to her, it's always the same type of response. So I was like, yes, Ryan, I understand. When I was eight years old, KGB killed my whole family in front of me. <laughs> but yes, the girl not texting you back, very sad. <laughs> A lot of couples in here tonight. It's good to be in a relationship. Here's my advice to the couples. Live together. Live together. Get those awkward conversations out of the way. When you live with a woman, you got to choose the side of the bed. That's weird. You don't think about that as a man. As a man, if you make it to a bed, you're having a pretty good day. <laughs> Women care. I want to sleep away from the door. Away from the door. That way, when the boogeyman comes in, he gets you. It's not realistic, ladies. I'll sleep by the door. That way, when there's a fire, I'll be the first one out. Because <laughs> I started it. Breaking up's hard to do. Sometimes you gotta burn a bitch. That's Chris Brown's new CD. Mm. Sensitive audience, eh? I want to be fair with you. I feel like some of you have a very good comedy audience and some of you are a little sensitive, so fuck it. Maybe comedy ain't your thing. <laughs> maybe next time bowling. What do you say, gang? <laughs> Wouldn't work either. You'd be like, oh my God, that black ball's hurting those white pins. <laughs> Living together is important. Uh, I once lived with a girl. When you live with a woman, you get new things. They buy stuff, all right? Uh, she, we live together and we got a new mattress. Yeah, memory foam mattress, those things last forever. The relationship did not last forever. <laughs> no, she caught me cheating. Well, she didn't actually catch me in the act. She saw the other girl's face in the memory foam. <laughs> it's a hard one to explain away. She's like, who is that? I'm like, whoa. I think our Lord has appeared to us. I'm not married. I get dating advice from my grandmother. That could be kind of weird. She's 97. She goes, Ryan, you should try to meet someone nice on the bus. She's 97. The bus was her Facebook. She says that because she met my grandfather on the bus. He was the bus driver. Yeah, she tries to make you cute. She goes, well, I want to ride the bus for free, so I married him. <laughs> yeah, that's adorable until you think about it. And you're like, wow, Grandma was the first easy pass. <laughs> There's a lot of women in here tonight. That's a good thing. I generally think women are more confident than guys. Generally, right? I've seen women compliment each other on their breast size. That's confidence. I've seen one girl look at another girl and go, oh my God, Becky, your boobs are so big. You have such big tatas. All I have are these mosquito bites. That's all I have. That takes confidence. That takes security. Can't do that, sir. Can't be like, Jesus Christ, Tyrone. <laughs> what a cock. <laughs> what a tremendous cock you have. All I have is this Tic Tac.
Confidence is easily the most attractive thing. Easily, right? I definitely think women are way more confident than guys. That's why I don't think you need plastic surgery. If you're gonna do it, do it safely. Like I read an article about women going out of the country to get plastic surgery because it's cheaper. Going to places like South America and Mexico, get plastic surgery because it's cheaper. Can you think of a more horrific idea than that? <laughs> you get a boob job in Mexico, you're coming back with one titty filled with candy <laughs> and the other titty filled with seven Mexicans trying to get into the country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that joke is rest body image, our immigration problem, and it had a pinata. I will say this, I do think uh, Spanish women are easily more confident than white chicks. Easily, easily. I had some bad experiences. Uh, I dated a cutter, you guys know what that is? Well, that's not the part you laugh at. Uh, no, no, she's a white chick. When she got sad and depressed, she would physically cut herself. It's a sickness, and for some reason, it only happens to white women. Spanish women and black women don't do that. No, when they get sad, they cut you. A lot of couples in here, as I said earlier, it's good to be in a relationship. It's hard, though. Women want kids, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I might want to adopt, but I don't mean real adopt. I mean, like, 60 cents a day, and they never show up on your doorstep. <laughs> you just get a photo, and you brag at parties. That's my son in Tubu. He really likes rice. I don't have any kids. I got a nephew. He sucks. He's a shitty person. He gets straight A's and is amazing at baseball. He's got no insecurities, so he's a jerk. You need insecurities in life to be a good person. So I think it's my job as his uncle to give him insecurities. That's what I do. Yeah, he was upset. He thought his parents were getting a divorce. So because I love him, I told him it was his fault. I was like, hey buddy, I knew them before you were born. They were happy. Yeah, kids ruin relationships. Every girl I've ever gotten pregnant, I've never spoken to again. <laughs> I'm an idiot, it's true. I know, I know if you take it seriously, it's very awful, but lucky for me, we're in a comedy club, huh? <laughs> I'm an idiot, I'm bad with names and countries, that's my weakness, I know we have an international audience. Last week I was speaking about Iran, not pronounced that way, who knows how to say it? That's right, it's Iran, I didn't know that. I had a woman in the audience from there, she stood up and corrected me. She goes, it's pronounced the Ron. Why don't you Americans learn about other people's cultures? So I threw a rock at her head. <laughs> well, why is she speaking in public and questioning a man? <laughs> yeah, morally I'm on the right side of that joke. If you didn't laugh at that joke, you're probably Al-Qaeda. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Ryan Reese. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs> Lovely audience. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Michael Che is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. This next comic, one of my favorites. I uh, love this guy. I see him all over the city. It's always a pleasure to watch him work. Please welcome, from VH1, Michael Che. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I was at home uh, watching some action films, or porno as you might call it. 
It's my favorite. Porn's good for guys especially, you know? It lets us know what women might be into without having to ask them. Because <laughs> they'll never tell us. We just got to guess and hope they don't call the cops. If, <laughs> if you would have told me before I seen it done in the movie that some girls like to be choked during sex, I'd be like, shenanigans, <laughs> why am I trying that bullshit? Well, yeah, let me finish. So I was watching some interracial porno for Black History Month, and it's my month. And um, I got reflective when I was doing it, too. I was like, damn, I wonder who was the first black dude to star in an interracial porno? And how come we don't know his name as the bravest motherfucker in civil rights history? You know how dangerous it must have been for them to fuck white women on tape in the 50s? <laughs> Jackie Robinson got death threats. He just played baseball with white people. <laughs> Could you imagine what that dude went through? He should be on every stamp. <laughs> you know, I've tried watching other kinds of movies, but they're gross. You never watch like a love story, like people fall in love on tape? And ugh, ugh, I'd much rather watch strangers fuck. I think people watch those love stories because they want to fantasize and pretend that someday that'll be them. They'll fall in love and it'll be beautiful. And that's their fantasy and that's the movies they watch. But that's not my fantasy. You know what's my fantasy? I'm delivering pizza to a sorority. <laughs> and they can't pay for it. I was in a relationship for a long time. It, I was, I was in a relationship, we got out of that shit. It was, it was hard, she wanted to get married and I'm afraid to get married because I still think I might be rich someday. <laughs> Whenever rich dudes propose, I feel like they're saying, hey, I bet you half my shit, I'll never cheat on you. That's what happens to rich people. They lose half their shit. I watch Sports Center. <laughs> Kobe Bryant's worth $150 million. His wife was gonna leave him in a divorce and take $75 million away because she had to raise the kids by herself. For $75 million, I would have raised Kobe's kids for half that shit. <laughs> I don't even know them. I would have breastfed them and everything. <laughs> I would have been a great mom. I've been poor my whole life, dude. That's why I don't really understand when they talk about this recession so much, you know? I don't get it. Like, either they're lying to me or, or I'm just too stupid to understand what the fuck they talking about, you know? Because I was watching the news and I heard this lady, she was like, we facing a recession. We owe China $11 trillion. I was like, we? <laughs> I don't owe China shit. You owe China eleven trillion dollars. We, we owe Sprint ninety dollars. I went to those Occupy Wall Street marches last year because I wanted to see some protesters get tased. And I saw the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life there. I saw a white lady holding a sign that said, fuck the police. I wanted to rob her on principle. committed she was. <laughs> I don't know if that's prejudice or not, you know? I'm, you know what, I don't care if it's prejudice, because I'm a prejudiced guy, I don't give a fuck. I get it honest, sometimes I'm prejudiced against my own people. Sometimes I'm on the subway and I see four or five black kids get on and they all wearing the same colors, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I 
I really hope they don't start breakdancing for us. Please be a gang or something cool. Don't be another struggling dance troupe on the A train. I, I got a friend that's real homophobic, which is hilarious. Like if I do a show, like this is Chelsea, this is gay neighborhood. If I tell him I'm doing a show in a gay neighborhood, he's like, yo, be careful over there, son. It's mad gay. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna catch it or some shit. <laughs> you can't catch gay by going to a gay neighborhood. That's ridiculous. You can only catch gay in jail. I think. <laughs> well, I only know that because I watch Lock Up on MSNBC. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a jail documentary, but there's always a dude on there that's been sentenced like 20 years, five years in, he's already had sex with other dudes. I've seen guys go five years without pussy before. I've been to high school. <laughs> well, at the end of it, I never heard nobody say, yo, you didn't get a date to prom either? Let's go fuck Philip." <laughs> he's in the showers, let's stab him. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair to Philip. I'm for equal rights, man. I think people should be allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. You know? I don't... I don't even understand the logic against half... Like, I don't even understand the logic they have. Like, I heard this dude, he's like, come on, man, you can't let gay people get married. What's next? People are gonna wanna marry animals? And I was like, yup. <laughs> Fucking cares, dude, I eat animals. You wanna fuck one? That's your business. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm doing the worst thing to it. <laughs> if I was a goat and you asked me, if you was like, yo, goat. <laughs> Would you rather be chopped up in this Jamaican lady stew? <laughs> or get blown by this strange farmer? <laughs> it wouldn't be the toughest decision I made as a goat. Anyway, man, I'm gonna be 30 this year, you know? It's exciting. I enjoy things more the older I get. I noticed that, you know? Like, I enjoy drinking now. I didn't enjoy drinking when I was young. I enjoyed getting fucked up, but I didn't enjoy drinking. When I was younger, we used to drink Bacardi 151. Yeah, it's, it's a 151 proof rum, and it tastes like a fucking curling iron. <laughs> but it get us fucked up, and that's why we drink it. I enjoy sex now, too. I enjoyed sex when I was younger, but I only enjoyed it for like five or six pumps. <laughs> then after that, I was busy dividing fractions and trying to remember scenes from The Color Purple. <laughs> Every guy's got a trick to not come fast, it's true. <laughs> Women don't, you just come. It's because we're nice people. <laughs> no woman in here was about to come early and was like, oh shit, think of Danny Glover, think of Danny Glover. <laughs> books teaching women how to enjoy sex. That's why you get to do it. There's no books teaching men how to enjoy sex. That's why I'm gonna write a book teaching men how to enjoy sex. It's gonna be two pages long. <laughs> and the first page is gonna say, if you feel like you gotta come, come. <laughs> and the second page is gonna be a bibliography. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Michael Che. You guys have been fantastic. <laughs> TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Daniel Tirado is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Thank you so much, everybody. I gotta say, this is a hot crowd here tonight. This is a hot crowd, yes?
Let's keep things going with a very funny guy. He's been on the Just for Laughs Festival. Please welcome very funny guy, Daniel Torado. <laughs> Nice. What's up? So, uh, I went to this house party and uh, someone offered me a, uh, a jello shot. And I was like, you know what? I don't do jello shots. I don't mix children's dessert <laughs> with an adult beverage. <laughs> but if you got a Twizzler, I'll definitely snore some cocaine. Joke number one, what's up? <laughs> I saw this black and white movie and I noticed something. It was so easy to rob someone back in the 30s. You know, you didn't really need a weapon. All you needed were your fingers. You know, I'd stick them in your coat pocket and go, get him up. <laughs> I mean, it would always work, right? Like no one ever went, hmm, nah. And I don't know how no one ever thought of going, hey man, don't shoot, please. I'm just gonna reach for my wallet slowly now. You get him up. <laughs> sense, right? <laughs> Love living in New York City. A lot of panhandlers, though. I get, I get uncomfortable when I see one, because I know as soon as we make eye contact, dude's gonna ask you for some change. So now, when I spa one, I just beat him to the punch. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, do you have some change, please? <laughs> and he can't say no, because he's already holding a cup full of change, right? For a dollar, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> My dad's got a heavy drinking problem. He's uh, he's Peruvian. Not that it's a consequence, but <laughs> I told him you should go to AA meetings, and his answer was, uh, "Why should I go to Alcoholics Anonymous? Everybody knows I drink. I'm not anonymous." <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? Been watching a lot of soccer lately. Greatest sport in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, three people. It is, right? It's pretty much every country's national sport, except for the US. We pick baseball. The only major league sport that requires the least amount of physical exertion. I'm sure when Europeans introduce soccer to Americans, uh, we try to modify the rules, you know, to accommodate our lazy asses. We're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean to tell me that we're gonna be running up and down a field, kicking a ball for three hours? <laughs> That's just silly. <laughs> All right, new rules. Rule numero uno. No running. <laughs> half of the players will be out on the field standing. The other half will be sitting on a bench. Because we can't have all those players doing all that standing. No running, no running. But it's a sport. All right. Each player will take his turn at running. <laughs> but we're going to create three bases to take a break from all that running. <laughs> and if you're tired of running, feel free to just slide into base. <laughs> and since we'll be doing all that sitting and sliding, we best make sure we're comfortable. So rule numero dos. Everybody wears pajamas. Play ball. <laughs> a lot of couples out tonight. You guys together? Yeah, how long you guys been together? Three years. Three years. Did you ever miss like being single? <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit, man. <laughs> guys are full of shit, man. Do you know that a man lies on average 29 times a day? 29 times a day. And that's not even true, I just made that up. I've been with my girl for seven years. I miss being single sometimes, you know? I'm sure she misses it too. It doesn't mean we don't love each other. But you know what I don't miss? I don't miss the whole single bar scene. Because I noticed something. I noticed that women in bars are like slot machines at the casino. <laughs> it's true, like as soon as you walk in, there's like so many of them. But we have to pick the one that's gonna get us lucky, right? And then when you find her, what do you do? We gotta put money in it, and money in it, 
and more money in it until we realize, yo, this machine's playing me. And we walk away, right? And then a weasel shows up, puts in a quarter, and like, bing, 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 jackpot. I'm like, dude, that's half mine. You better share. You gotta keep it exciting. You know, my girl's constantly complaining. Well, I was doing the same thing, dinner, movie, dinner, movie. I said, you know what, you're spoiled because you would not have this attitude if we lived in a third world country. Yeah. Right, because there's like no concept of dating over there. Like, how do you scoop up a chick? Like, what's your pickup line? What do you tell a woman, right? Like, hey, I, uh, I heard the Red Cross is in town this weekend. <laughs> and I thought maybe you and me, we, we could go get vaccinated. Or if you want, I heard about this really cool spot where I think we could find a little bit of water, you know? <laughs> and you know how you ladies have terrible cheesy pickup lines that never work? I'm sure they have the same thing over there too. You know, I'm sure like a guy goes up to a girl and he's like, excuse me, are you a model? Because you look hungry. <laughs> your middle name must be tuberculosis because your body looks sick, what? <laughs> Is that a bloated stomach or you had my baby? <laughs> Too far? I could go further. I would, <laughs> I would love to dip you in a barbecue sauce because your ribs look delicious. <laughs> I think I can even top that one. Uh, First you tell me you haven't eaten in a week, now you tell me you don't want to swallow. <laughs> I love how the more distasteful it got, the more we came together as a group, that's awesome. <laughs> love doing comedy, man, it's the best job in the world. It really is. Well, second best job, I think the best job in the world would probably be like being a superhero, right? <laughs> But I noticed something, if you're gonna be one, you need like a catchy jingle. You know, like Spidey had this jazzy, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can, pew. <laughs> Superman had John Williams compose a symphony, a symphony, well deserved, he's Superman. But who's the bird brain who wrote the lyrics to that 1980s Batman song, right? It's like the Cape Crusader hired a five-year-old to write that shit with a purple Crayola. Kid was like, Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> what the heck? Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Something's missing. Ah, da 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 Batman. Like, who the hell wrote that song, right? Probably the same dude who wrote Happy Birthday. And I'm sure he had a board meeting with 20 of his best, you know, writers. He's like, all right, show me what you've been working on all month. This is it, this is the final draft. All right, what do you got? Batman, 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 Batman. Da 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 da. Batman. I love it. <laughs> Pow, thank you guys, be safe, have a good night. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Mark Vieira is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Thank you, thank you so much, everybody. 
Our final comic of the evening is a very funny guy. He's been on Showtime. He's been on 30 Rock. Please welcome to the stage my friend Mark Vieira. <laughs> How we doing? We're good, we're good. I always ask whether beautiful ladies, beautiful women make some noise if you're in the building, beautiful ladies. And some of y'all didn't clap, what happened? Got a low self-esteem section. Women like, no, not me. My stomach. I'm so bloated. <laughs> I don't feel so pretty. I love you ladies, I do. I think y'all are the best. I just know that you are all crazy, every single one of y'all. I know, because I have one of these things in my house. I have one. <laughs> Married 17 years, about two months ago. Seven, don't clap, don't clap! You don't know what I'm going through, don't clap. <laughs> My wife is this big, four feet, 11 inches. I don't know how they fit all the devil in that woman, but they got it in. Oh, they got it in. She is me. And she hits people. It's like fighting a hobbit in your house. No, 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 stop it. Stop it. Women, I, 17 years. I say 17 years, a lot of you go, wow, you guys. Must know each other. Nope, I don't know who she is. I have no idea. Because women always going through stuff. My wife is going through some. The past three years, my wife has been buying shoes like they're making the last pairs. You know what I mean? <laughs> buying shoes. Shut up. I hate all of y'all. <laughs> you hear the women? They're cheering for that. Buy shoes! <laughs> this is what men don't understand. We will never understand. Why do you have so many shoes, not one pair, it's comfortable. Not one pair. You've seen them, right? You see them, they leave the house at 8 p.m. They look gorgeous. They walk out like stallions. You see this? You ever see them when they come back in the house? At about one in the morning, they don't look like that anymore. You ever see them, especially when that foot starts to hurt in them heels and they walk in the house? Look like they learned how to walk yesterday. <laughs> What's wrong with you? My foot is killing me. But I look good though. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, look at them. They know who they are. <laughs> Buying shoes. Women do that. Women buy shoes. Not comfortable. My wife did this. She went to a holiday party, bought a new outfit. New dress, shoes. She bought the dress in October. She said, I'm a workout and I'm a fit into this dress. <laughs> she didn't really work out that way. <laughs> she bought the size that about four sizes too small. And then women do marry, I swear when you're married, you can't. She wanna get me involved <laughs> in the putting on of this dress. I don't want to be a part of this shit. <laughs> no man wants to hear this, honey. Help me zip this. I'm looking at the zipper like. <laughs> and the zipper is looking at me like this. <laughs> she partied all night in that dress couldn't fucking breathe the whole night. <laughs> she had her heels on. <laughs> she came in the house, this is a true story. She came in the house, took her shoes off and her toes. <laughs> Looked like the inside of the shoe. <laughs> For about 20 minutes, the toes were like this here. And I was just listening. I heard the toes pop back into place. I heard it. The toes are. And she said, oh. <laughs> I love her, I just don't understand. I have no more patience either. That's the difference. Married 17 years, my married folks know, especially the men, we don't, 
It's the first thing that goes is the patience. Oh, we just run out of it. I can't wait anymore. I can't do the wait. You know, you know the wait when you're already dressed and she's in the room? See, when you're single, you can't say shit. When you're single, you just gotta sit there. Take your time. So you're married, you have no more patience. You're like, hurry the fuck up! leave you. <laughs> and women do this shit, we don't let it. Women, women come out of the room and, and put on a fashion show that nobody paid to see. Every woman does this shit. They come out of the outfit, baby! <laughs> you gotta ask, ask stupid, how do I look? Late! Bitch, you look late. Let's, Let's get the f You look late. I wish I would have known. But no one ever tells you. When you get married, you know what people say? Congratulations. Good luck. They don't tell you the truth. This shit is hard every fucking day. I love my wife, but sometimes she comes home, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> she couldn't get lost or some shit. <laughs> she gotta find my house every fucking day. <laughs> I love her, but it's fucking hurt. <laughs> Nobody told me. Nobody told me the fucking sex, sex. Let me tell you, 17 years, <laughs> shit don't happen. It don't happen. I want it to happen, but it don't fucking happen. I don't have the moves. You know, we don't have moves. Guys don't have moves, you know. When you're married, you got no more moves. We're fresh out of good moves. When you're single, anything you do is good. Yeah, you you compliment, you look beautiful. Oh. Is that I'm beautiful? She's doing the dishes and you're single, you could come behind her, put her Put your hands on her hips and blow on her neck. <laughs> she will drop a plate. Ah! <laughs> That's my spot. <laughs> Next thing you know, you are doing it in the kitchen. Let my wife be in the house doing the dishes. <laughs> and I come from behind her and blow on her neck. <laughs> She will look at me and say, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know I have a cold, asshole. <laughs> Trying to give me pneumonia? What the fuck? And what is that smell in your mouth? What the fuck? You have shit biscuits for lunch? Jesus, what is that smell? See, when you're dating, they don't say shit like that to you. And when you marry, they tell you you fucking stink. You fucking stink. <laughs> oh my god! You smell like shit. <laughs> Nobody tells you you gotta. Don't fucking argue. <laughs> Nobody tells you this shit. I'm 17. I don't argue no more. You know why? There's fucking. There's no purpose. Can't win. Can't win. My wife is one of these new women. Educated, makes money, powerful. Shut up. I hate all of y'all. This kind of woman lives by a different creed. You know what the creed is? I got this. That's the kind of woman we're dealing with. I got this. You get into an argument, you say shit. Like, I don't give a fuck, I'm leaving. They go, I don't give a fuck. I, I told that shit to my wife. I'm leaving. She said, leave. She started singing to the left, to the left. Bye. She said, text me when you get to your mother's house. <laughs> she knows that's where I'm going to my mother's house. You know why? Because my mother always got my back. That's why. <laughs> I love going to my mother like, Ma, I hate that bitch. And my mother's like, me too. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. Mark Vieira. <laughs> Stay 
tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Thank you, thank you so much for watching Gotham Comedy Live. Please welcome back to the stage Ryan Reese, Michael Che, Daniel Tenato, and Mark Vieira. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Good night.